charged us with, which was our Act 200, Section 9 report. Um, and if you haven't been read it yet, um, now that we have your email address, we will be sure to send it to you. Um, but essentially, the Department of Mental Health uh, responded to that legislative charge um, and really to articulate what is kind of the overarching system structure of our system of care. Um, and there are a lot of ideas and data in that report uh, that I think we can really build off. Uh, data related to quality, access, person-centered care, uh, parity, coercion, and payment reform. It was also the charge of the legislature that this process was inclusive, uh, that brought in the voices of broad stakeholders. That's inclusive of those who identify as psychiatric survivors, consumers, or peers, family members, providers of mental health services, and of course, providers of our overall broader healthcare system. 
And the charge that we are responding to today to kind of build off the great information in that report is to work towards the articulation of a common long-term vision of integration of mental health services within a comprehensive and holistic health care system. And that is the work that we're doing today, building off of that report, tapping into the wisdom of communities uh, to ensure that as we move forward with something more detailed and concrete, uh, that your voices are heard. In terms of some of the action uh, that we're taking on, we think that now is really the time that we can strategically align around a common 10-year vision for our Vermont mental health system of care. And we need to articulate what that end state looks like. Because if we don't know our end state, then it's hard to know what our first step should be to get there. And then we might end up inadvertently falling into the trap of uh, implementing Band-Aids and quick fixes, and those can actually get in the way of achieving some of the long-term solutions that we'd really hope for in our mental health system of care. So essentially, we know what we should do, but we never really feel like we get there. Uh, and I think that if we can come together around that long-term vision, articulate that end state, what are the short-term, mid-term, long-term actions and strategies that it's going to take to get there, then we really can achieve a system for Vermonters uh, that will really meet their needs and advance our system forward. One of the next steps after our work is done, after we have uh, conducted all of these listening tours, this is number four in a series of five. Um, again, wanting to ensure that the voice of community members and our partners is really infused in this work. We'll be pulling together a think tank uh, that will have the daunting job of kind of synthesizing all of the data from the report, the themes and ideas that are generated in the listening tour, and then synthesizing that into an actionable blueprint for the future of our mental health system in Vermont. This is just a little bit of a visual timeline of the work that we're embarking on, uh, the community forums that we're conducting right now across the state. The think tank will be convening between September and December, and then we'll be presenting the report and blueprint to the legislature uh, in January of 2020. When we were embarking on this journey at the department, uh, we knew that it would take an innovative framework uh, to really hold this work, uh, particularly as we're thinking about uh, broader systems change. And we found what I think is the perfect framework for this work, which is appreciative inquiry. So forget everything you learned in Change Management 101, people and systems as problems to be solved. That kind of can get us on an exhausting treadmill of deficit-based thinking um, and get in the way of real innovation and opportunity. Appreciative inquiry really focuses on leveraging our core system strengths. Our strengths as a community where we've had periods of excellence in the system of care and how do we build on those and create opportunities for innovation. That doesn't mean we can't acknowledge what hasn't worked. Whether you're an individual who has had a very challenging, difficult experience in the system, a family member who has watched your loved one fall through the cracks of the system, an agency leader who has stayed up late at night just trying to make the numbers work, we understand that there are many challenges in the system. The key is to articulate what hasn't worked and then allow us to understand what would have made it different. How can we take that experience from here to here? Because that's the real catalyst for change and that's what we can build on to move our system forward. The other thing to remember is that appreciative inquiry is not a top-down approach. It's a whole system in the room approach, meaning that we want all stakeholders to be contributing their voices to this work. We know we can't create the future of our mental health system of Vermont in a vacuum, which is essentially why we've convened you all here today. And a little bit just about the appreciative inquiry process there are five Ds, if you will, or domains of appreciative inquiry. The first one is really defining the topic of inquiry. What does the system want more of? Um, and that was essentially defined by Act 200, Section 9, and the report that we did. And the discovery and dreaming is what we're focused on here today. From a discovery standpoint, it's a way of articulating what works remembering our community successes, where we've excelled as a system and felt like there were periods of excellence. 
And then dreaming is imagining how we build on those experiences and strengths and then move them forward into a future system. The design will be the work of the think tank to try, as I said, to synthesize those facts and data and ideas and themes into that actionable blueprint, essentially taking the best of what is, bringing it together with the best of what could be to essentially create the ideal. And then delivery and deployment is really our implementation. So how do we take this blueprint and implement it in our state system and follow through? Now, I put this slide up here. Um, it says, I'm sure glad that hole isn't in our end. Uh, because I think at different times, we've all felt this way in our system of care, um, depending on the seat that we sit in. But I think we all recognize that we are truly in the same boat. And sometimes, I think we think that our best way to serve our system is to optimize our part in it. And that's important. But we also have to optimize the relationships between the parts to get the outcomes that we're after. And that requires us to work in a spirit of collaboration together, always recognizing that systems change truly moves at the speed of trust. So alternatively, we can think about a statement of common purpose where we're all pulling together as a system of care, playing to each other's strengths, and recognizing that it is truly the diversity of our perspectives that is our greatest strength. And we can't let grappling with these tough questions derail us from moving forward together. But it's going to take time, patience, trust, and iterative change to achieve the very best mental health system, and that we're all responsible and accountable for the success of the future of our mental health system in Vermont. Just shifting a little bit to talk about our afternoon agenda, uh, we'll be moving into our first activity which we call inquiry, which is really getting at um, that discovery and dreaming and building on our strengths. And again, we also want to hear what are those challenge areas from your perspective and help us understand what would improve that experience uh, to really drive that catalyst for change. We'll be taking a break. Uh, then we'll be moving into the visioning activity. Um, and perhaps your groups might be getting into some thinking about implementation um, and then wrap up and next steps. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Hensey, who is our Director of Healthcare and Mental Health Integration. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here, especially at such a gorgeous day. Um, so as Sarah um, mentioned, we this is the fourth of five of these listening sessions. We started out um, June 18th in Rutland. Um, then July 23rd, we were in St. Johnsbury. Last week, we were in Burlington. Today, we're here. And next week, we go to Brattleboro. Um, at each place, we're having an afternoon session and an evening session, um, trying to make sure that people can, can come in, um, either if they can't get here during work, um, in the evening around that. Um, we've had some really, really good turnout. Um, it's, it's really exciting for us to hear um, the conversation at these gatherings. Um, we're, we're compiling a, a lot of notes, as Sarah mentioned, and we'll be going through those. But um, it, it's been quite an experience, and I'm looking forward to the, today and next week as well. Um, so this is our current vision, the Department of Mental Health's current vision, that mental health is a cornerstone of health, that Vermonters live in caring communities with compassion for and determination to respond effectively and respectfully to the mental health needs of all citizens, that Vermonters have access to effective prevention, early intervention, and mental health treatment and supports as needed to live, work, learn, and participate fully in their communities. Now, I think, unfortunately, we can all agree we're not here. We don't have this. It is a vision for the future. Um, and that's what we really, that's what we want your help in. And, and the vision may well change. It probably will change as a result of this process, but, um, or aspects of it anyway. And this is what you're helping us um, to design. So, this is a pretty old uh, question, I think. Is the glass half full or half empty? 
So this is, I wanted to say a little bit more about um, what Sarah talked about with appreciative inquiry and why we're using this framework. Because um, you could just feel like, that's just so that you don't have to hear about the challenges or problems that we've run into in the system. Um, and that's not the case. Um, we want to hear those things. Um, there will be many opportunities this afternoon for you to voice concerns and tell us about issues that you've had. Um, we're also very open to, after this, if you want to send in written comments or um, how that might work for you. The, what we will ask you to do, though, today is when you name, if you name a concern, a problem, we will ask you to then, as Sarah mentioned, say, how do you see, how could that be better? What could we do to make that better? And are there existing strengths that you can think of that we could build on that would help us solve that problem? Um, it's really important that we do think about the existing strengths in the system today because that is, again, the science around change should, tells us that when you build on what's working, it both builds energy and inspiration, and you can you get this working better, and then you can you can still work on those problems to solve them, but you get you get all the momentum here on, on what's working and on building on that. Um, so the science behind this creating the frame of mind really goes to a negative versus a positive frame of mind. And the research shows that if you, like say you start your day out, you, you either receive bad news or maybe you have a conflict with a partner or a, a child um, and you get into a negative frame of mind. Um, the research tells us that it takes eight to nine hours on average to move out of that negative frame. Um, that we're primed. It's all about survival. We want to make sure if there's a problem that we get that fixed so that it doesn't harm us. Um, so you can see why we're really trying to get this into a positive frame so that we can move forward in a constructive way to build. So do feel free to tell us of concerns and problems and then if we can all talk about and how could we um, how could we fix that going forward? That would be, that'll be really helpful. Um, so to do this, what I'd like to do now is to ask you to think about an outstanding experience. And maybe I'll just go back on this for a minute. Um, so again, this is to very transparently to, to get us all into a positive frame of mind. I'm going to ask you to think about a neutral, non-mental health related experience. Um, I mean, if that's what comes to mind, outstanding experience, that'd be great. But it doesn't have to be. Just a neutral customer experience, uh, customer service experience. So we're thinking about something relational. Um, and what I think of whenever I think about an outstanding experience recently, for an example, is um, Recently, I stopped on my way to work at a place I'd never been in before for a cup of coffee. So I didn't know anyone in there. And I went in, it was self-serve. I filled up my travel mug with coffee and what happened happened. And I walked up to the counter to pay and I realized I didn't have my wallet. So of course, immediately I was completely embarrassed and felt really flustered. The cashier said, oh, that's fine. It's on the house. Have a great day. And you know, I was, <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, but for me, I really found that an outstanding experience. Um, one, the cashier gave me the benefit of the doubt. She assumed I'd made an honest mistake. She could have assumed that I'd done it on purpose, but that's not where she went. She assumed I'd made an honest mistake. She responded with generosity and kindness. And then I left there just filled with this feeling of generosity and kindness, you know, set up my day that way. Um, and I think many of you who work in the mental health field, you may recognize those points as those are primary ingredients of a trauma-informed system. You give people the benefit of the doubt, assume the best, and then you treat them with generosity and kindness. Um, so we're going to work with that 
in a minute. Um, but first, what I'd like to do is to ask you each to just take like 30 seconds. Um, and does an outstanding customer service experience jump to mind? And then we'll just take a few minutes for you to share that at your table. But so I'm really, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to see if you can think of something. That's fine. You can just share as a group if you're comfortable sharing your experience. Um, you can talk more about the example that I gave. But um, if you've come up with an outstanding experience, think about these questions. What, what made it outstanding? Um, what was it about the person or persons who served you that made it outstanding? What was your role in making it outstanding? Um, the reason, what was the result of your having had that experience? So we're asking these questions again to be thinking about we're going to translate this into mental health. Um, did it change your morning or your day? Did it change your how, change how you thought of those people or that place? So go ahead and share in your groups now. I'll give you about five minutes to do that. Now when I am, I'm going to ask you to think about this idea, this concept of an outstanding customer experience. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, points that could be taken, brought over to the mental health system of care. Now, I'd really like you to think about this, and we're, we're going to be asking you to do this the rest of this afternoon as you're going through these examples and, and, and discussing. We'd like you to be as specific, excuse me, I've got a dry spot in my throat, <coughs> excuse me, um, we'd like you to be as specific and some detail as possible. So like with these outstanding customer experiences, there's a whole realm of work that goes on around mental health, um, everything, prevention, promotion, uh, treatment, recovery, that you could say, well, that doesn't have to do with customer experience. It's what's happening in the, in the office supporting that. Well, that's a really excellent point. How do you get excellent customer service? How do you get frontline staff, uh, service providers, anyone out in the field consistently providing outstanding service? That doesn't happen by chance. There's a whole lot of work that goes on behind in a system that provides outstanding service. And it's everything from consistent and excellent training to a whole culture that is set by leadership. Um, so that cashier that, who waited on me, she knew that she could easily say, take a cup of coffee on the house, and there wasn't going to be any problem for her. Um, and her, her reaction was immediate. She didn't have to think about that. She clearly had support to treat customers really well. So it, it goes way beyond that initial surface thing that you see. And I'd really like you to think about that as, as we start to work in the small groups and your facilitators have worksheets. We've got questions. It's to guide. It, it shouldn't limit you at all if that's not where you want to go with it and you've got other ideas that will be um, welcomed. Um, but as we dig into this, if you can really just keep asking questions, try to go deeper. Try to go deeper. Um, this was real. This was this great experience. Well, how? Well, how does that happen? What is behind that? How do you get to that? And yes, at some point you're going to come down to oh, funding. There's got to be. You, you've got to have enough staff to have staff not be completely stressed out and, and getting angry with people. Um, they need to feel like they've got time to do their job and do it well. Well, how do you get enough staff? You have to have fun. You have to have the funds to, to support that staff. So please, as you, um, as you talk about this, really think about it in those terms to go further. Um, so what, what questions do you have? Okay, and as I say, your facilitators can work with you. I'm really just, if you think about that outstanding experience, the points that you named, 
how could that translate? How does it translate into the mental health system of care? And then your facilitators will help draw you along from there. So we've got um, just about an hour that we're gonna spend on this. So really dive in and, and be specific, please. And please be thinking about current strengths in the system that we can build on. Thank you.